So now is where the real fun begins, and here I'm giving you a couple of compounds, and I'm giving you all four spectra, the mass spectrum, the infrared spectrum, and both the carbon-13 and proton NMR spectrums. So and I highly recommend you kind of just go through them in the order that I've given them, the mass spectrum first, then IR, and then the carbon-13 NMR, and then the proton NMR. Uh, let's kind of see how this works, but in this case, I don't even have to give you a formula. Without a formula, we can't calculate the degrees of unsaturation or anything like that. Uh, and in this case, we'll start with the mass spectrum, and a couple big things I want to know is, first thing, I'll find that molecular ion peak, or parent peak. That's this guy right here, and if you kind of look at where it's located, it's at 170, and so it tells us that our molecular weight is 170. That's an even number, so we probably don't have nitrogen. At least we can for sure say we don't have an odd number of nitrogens. Uh, and in this case, then I ask myself, is there an M plus 2 peak? And right over here, there is indeed an M plus 2 peak at 172. So most compounds don't have any significant M plus 2 peak, so when you do have one, it stands out. And in this case, with it being roughly equal in height, that's a dead giveaway you have a bromine. Had it been only a third as tall, we would have known we'd had a chlorine. So, so far we know our molecule has a molecular weight of 170 and we have a bromine in it. Uh, moving on to the IR spectrum. If we look, we want to just kind of look at everything outside the fingerprint region. So kind of map out and everything left of 1500 and technically it's really a little less than 1500. So it turns out this peak right here will end up being significant. Uh, but here's 3000. If we just kind of mark up where 3000 falls, there's 3000 working its way up and we've got peaks both on the right and on the left of 3000, the ones that are immediately to the left are the sp2 CH bonds, and the ones that are immediately to the right are the sp3 CH bonds. So having these sp2 CH bonds, that's either usually part of an alkene or part of an aromatic ring. Uh, we don't have a, a signal of any significant strength around 1650, so we don't think alkene, but we do have again this signal right here. So, and again, from a little less than 15 technically to a little more than 1600 you might have one two or three peaks and that's your evidence of a benzene ring so an aromatic compound and in this case uh, even if we weren't completely positive with a benzene ring here the nmrs will definitely clue us in so let's take a look at that carbon 13 spectrum now uh, we're not going to spend too much time here either but we've got four signals so we've got an alkane signal down here and then these are all in the 110 to 160 range and most likely aromatic signals. So confirming what we kind of speculated over here on the IR, that that peak was indeed an uh, aromatic carbon-carbon peak. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna be a little nice for a second. If, if I was giving this to some students in a laboratory setting, I probably wouldn't say a thing. But on an exam, most professors would be nice enough to kind of point towards there and say that's actually two peaks. So it looks like from an initial inspection that there's really five signals in this thing, but I'm telling you that this thicker peak in the middle here is actually two peaks all on its own, and so there's really six signals here so in the HNMR, and so four signals in the aromatic region tells me uh, that we've got some symmetry in our benzene. Benzene's got six carbons, so it'll only have four signals. There's some symmetry there. Uh, we've actually found out a fair amount of information before we've even gotten to the HNMR, uh, but now we're going to spend the most amount of time in the HNMR. That's where the, the greatest amount of information is. So let's take a closer look at that HNMR. So we'll definitely spend the most significant amount of time on our HNMR here. I highly recommend you get good at looking at your mass spec IR and carbon-13 NMR and just kind of breezing through them as quickly as possible because uh, we're going to spend the most time here. Uh, and in this case, I've just kind of diagrammed out that, yes, we already know the molecular weight's 170 and that there's a bromine from the mass spec and that we have a benzene ring both from the IR and the carbon-13 NMR. And if we, again, still weren't sure, the... HNMR here is going to confirm it. In the aromatic region here between 6.5 and 8.5, and we've got some signals. So we definitely have a benzene ring. Uh, we also have one signal down here in the alkane region. Now, in the alkane region, I see this uh, multiple of three, and I like starting there, but it's the only place to start in the alkane region since it's the only signal down there. Uh, but in that case, that is a methyl group, and I can see that it's a single peak, so a singlet. And so that tells me there's no neighbor. So I have no idea what this methyl group is next to at this point. It's just a piece of the puzzle. So, and going back down to this aromatic region, we've seen this pattern before, and I highly recommend it's one you commit to memory here, but we've got two doublets that represent two H's each, and that's a benzene ring with symmetry here. And we're gonna have two substituents coming off our benzene in a para-disubstituted pattern on opposite sides. That way we maintain some sort of symmetry. Uh, and in this case, we've in interpreted all our signals, and the question we got to ask ourselves is, do we have every piece of the puzzle? Well, in this case, 
we don't know the formula, but we do know it's going to weigh 170. Well, bromine weighs 79. In this case, a benzene ring with four hydrons on it, so six carbons is 72, plus the four H's gets us up to 76. And then a methyl group's going to weigh 15. And if we add these all together here, um, in this case, it actually does add up to 170. Uh, and so in this case, we do indeed have every piece of the puzzle. And the last thing that we need to do is just construct our molecule. So keep in mind that a bromine is only going to make one bond, having seven valence electrons. And so our bromine and our methyl group each only have one attachment point, one bond left to make. But our benzene's got two. And so the benzene is the only one making multiple bonds. It has to go in the middle of our structure. And so our molecule in this case... It's going to have a benz I'm sorry, bromine on one side, a methyl on the other. And again, right now, before I attach anything, it's symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter which you put on which side. So I'll put the bromine here, and I'll put the methyl group here, and that is the structure of the molecule depicted in these four spectra.